Hey guys, welcome back. So, I've been busy again between episodes and I've set up some more automation in here. A couple of these, I think it was just up to here that I got and I've added these on this side and a couple more on this side as well and I'll explain what they do in a second. But ultimately all of these machines plus the, the metal press downstairs that I made last time uh, ultimately gets us this Signalum cell frame which is what we were after last time. So with this we can get into machine structures which is advanced rocketry and that will get us into space as well as the mob duplicator here so I can set up a mob farm I'm thinking I'll do that for like the cryothium dust and things like that and of course I'll use it for blood magic as well uh, so yeah that's all of these steps are now fully automated all the way down apart from this one here I, Surely, but I can print these off. So I'll quickly show you what I have set up here. Um, I have two alloy furnaces which are just for on the mine crafting. I can add some more interfaces if needed. Um, and I have these two 8 speed upgrades at the moment. Uh, which is 9000 RF a tick. Obviously my power is not going to be able to handle everything running at the same time. But it's useful for on demand crafting things like this. I have an induction smelter and a pulverizer. These are for these are for rosin and cinnabar. So basically, I have the pulverizer smelting gold with the secondary augment um, increased chance output buffs. So that just smelts gold if my cinnabar is below. Right now, I have it set to two stacks, but I don't know if I'll need to change that or not. I'll just leave it for now. So. Once I have two stacks of cinnabar, it stops uh, pulverizing the gold here. Uh, same thing with the induction smelter. This is to get rich slag in order to get the signalum cell frame. And then on this side I have the melter with glowstone, the fluid infuser with to make lumium. And then this, these two here are for the reinforced cell frame, so this fills it with redstone here. Or, sorry, uh, lumium, not redstone. I also have this induction smelter as the final step in the process in order to fill the empty frame with 40 blocks of redstone. So I just have that on demand here. So with that now out of the way, um, the next thing I want to tackle is the machine structure, which requires elite plating, which requires DU plating, which requires advanced plating, which is then basic. So there's a lot of nested steps here, but up until the advanced, I have all of this all made. So it's just going to be starting from here. So we need uranium-238 and sulfur. Now I think our best option for sulfur is going to be this rock crusher recipe here, which is just crushing granite, which I can get from this igne igneous extruder, which crushes into rhodochrosite, which we will need later on for the crystal binder which is used in this elite plating among with among other things here um, but that gets us sulfur here and this byproduct which I think is useless uh, but yeah anyway that will get us the sulfur as for the uranium I think it's just going to be this isotope separator here with uranium oxide uranium oxide is fluid infusing oxygen with uranium grit I think all this setup is going to be downstairs so that gets us their uranium and that will get us this DU plate in here and then it's the elite plate in but let's just start with the DU first so we're going to need one isotope separator one electrolytic separator for the oxygen one fluid infuser I just noticed here that we need a little bit of this DU plating for the rock crusher here. We need four exactly, so I've just quickly set up this to manually put oxygen and uranium together, which is going to get us the things for the DU plating. And once we get that, we can autom start automating the rock crushing. Okay, I got the rock crusher here. I got enough for four plates, so I made this rock crusher. It's time to start setting up the igneous extruders to make the granite and uh, I think I'll just set up three at the moment because I know for a fact we'll need them later on. 
Okay, so I have the three igneous extruders here, one for granite, diorite and andesite. And then that feeds into a rock crusher here, which gives us the rhodochrosite, sulfur and this other byproduct, which is useless right now. And of course the other two rock crushers will go right here and give us the rest of the things we need for later on. Next up is this uranium-238 oxide. Alright, so I've set up the uranium here. I think I might have said before that we needed uranium oxide, but that turns out not to be the case. It can just be regular uranium-238, which is just running it through the isotope separator, and there's no need to infuse it with oxygen. So now that should get us the advanced plate in, I believe. Or not the advanced, the elite plate, in. the DU plate, in, sorry. There you go, there's one DU plating. So next is on to the Elite one. So which requires the DU plating boron, which we are going to eventually get from the laser from Industrial Foregoing. But before setting this up, I think I'm going to need some more power. So I'm going to have to sort out extra power before I can set any of this up. So for now, I'll just mine it manually and set up the system to auto-process it just now. It also requires this crystal binder which is a very involved step. So the crushed rhodochrosite, we're getting this from our granite here which we're rock crushing. That's this stuff here. Then the pulverized obsidian, that's easy enough. Um, magnesium dust is another thing we're going to get from the lasers. Uh, magnesium ore, yeah, lasers here, and then that just leaves the calcium sulfate. And this is a whole list of fluids with nuclear craft, so chemical reactor, sulfur, and fluorite water gives us this uh, calcium sulfate solution. But in order to get this, we need to get crushed fluorite with water, which I think is from the crusher as well. Yeah, this is from the diorite. Yeah, so this is another thing we need. So we'll need to set up another rock crusher here. And that'll give us that material. Let's just pin this actually. Um, so the next thing is sulfuric acid, which is water and sulfur trioxide, which comes from oxygen and sulfur dioxide, which is from more sulfur, which we're already getting over here. I'm just going to take a second and get all the things we need and I'll start setting that up right now. Okay, so there's a bit of a roadblock here. In order to get the calcium sulfate, we need a chemical infuser. And to get a chemical infuser, we need these infused diamonds here. Which means we need dimensional shards. And these only generate on other planets. Or on... Through the void ore miners. Or the lasers but we need to set up basically one or the other so I think I'm going to start the void ore miners since they do take a long time to get um, basically to the next tier because you need resources from tier 1 to get to tier 2 tier 2 to get to tier 3 and so on up to tier 6 and these dimensional shards only come from tier 5 and tier 6 so I think we're going to need to do this first I'm not sure how the power situation will be, but I might have to upgrade it in order to run these. Uh, but yeah, this this project here is going to need to be on hold for now. Uh, that was a, a slight oversight, I forgot about that. So, let's start setting up the laser then. So for the laser, we need these structure frames, which means we need uh, lithorite here. Luckily I looted one of these from a dragon uh, underground and these can be printed so that's not a big deal to get us started. So I'm going to make the what is it, structure frames and also yeah, structure frames and also structure panels. So I'll get this together and we'll set this up. Okay so I'll put in all the recipes for the structure uh, panels and structure uh, frames that we need. I managed to get the structure panels and we need 24 of these and I believe we're going to be short, yeah, lithorite crystals 
Uh, I'm printing those just now with UU Matter and then 2000 tin ingots. Um, luckily we have a lot of tin from the sifting, so we have nearly 70,000 tin ore. And bef like I don't have automatic ore processing yet, but I've just been using a Fortune auto smelt pick to just quickly process this tin just now as I need it. And 2000, I mean I'm going to get that in just a minute or two here. So yeah, I already have two th 3000 and I haven't even mined all of this block yet. So Okay, so they're now crafting. Another question is where do we actually want to put these? I mean, obviously I could just stick them underground and that would just be the easy option, but I wanted to challenge myself this time and build everything above ground, so... Um, I mean, we could either do it in this little space here. Uh, eventually I do want to set up two of these, but it will be one just for now. So we could either do it in that space over there, or next to this tree farm here in this little corner. Uh, I'm thinking over here actually, but I'll need to double check this will be enough space to fit the two of them because they do get pretty big uh, the higher tier you go. So let's just check the maximum dimensions here. So the tier 6 is 13 by 13 looks like. So we're going to need double that space uh, and 8 tall as well. So they're pretty big structures. Okay, obviously we're also going to need the controller block which is litherite which we have, interconnect which is using the panels, uh, diamond easy enough to get a block and this diode. Now the diode requires two mana infused gears which we are getting from our or I'm getting the things to make mana steel from the mob farm and that just needs to go through the metal press. Um, skystone block I have a bunch of that. This empowered void crystal gave me a bit of trouble I just tried to craft it there in the empowerer and it gave me uh, red lights basically it wasn't getting enough power so I had to just hook up more connections per display stand to jam more power in there because I think it takes 10 million uh, which is a lot of power and these ender energy conduits work per connection um, so that was able to finish that craft there and then that just leaves this iridium plate, iridium reinforced plate here. So I'm just printing off some more iridium and I'll get this crafted up. Okay, so I have the void ore miner set up now, tier one. It's using 4,000 RF a tick every, or sorry, it takes 400 ticks per item at 4,000 RF a tick. So I have all that just feeding into an ender chest here, which goes into our storage drawer system. And I've set up a drawer with all the things that come out of this. Um, the max tier one goes all the way to the f like this level here. Uh, so I've left room for upgrades and I think I'll put the other one on top here. And maybe a resource miner in the middle here. And I'll explain why a uh, later date. But for this void ore miner you're going to need the laser lens and it also needs direct access to bedrock there to mine. But yeah, that's going to take quite some time. Uh, in order for us to get to tier 2, we need these erodium crystals, which come from the tier 1 at a 7.99% chance. So I have to leave this running a little bit, but yeah, that's going to take a while for us to get to the next tier. So while that's running, I think I'll go and move our power gen and also upgrade it. Uh, uh, even further, I think the max we can get out of that turbine uh, over there is 80,000 RF a tick and I'm currently at 56,000 somewhere around there so I'll get it up to 80,000 and I'll set up a permanent place for it, probably here uh, but that isn't going to be the primary source of power for long I think I'm going to switch to a mechanism reactor and I'll also need a reactor from the big reactors mod uh, extreme reactor sorry this one in order to unlock draconic evolution so I might do this one first uh, because it will obviously be cheaper but we'll see I'll decide in a sec but first I'm gonna go and upgrade the power that we have maybe set up a second one of these just so it speeds it up uh, but yeah I'm not sure on the power situation but yeah um, 
let me go remove the power first. Okay, wow, this took way longer than I'd like to admit. But I got our power situation moved over here now. Uh, man, trying to mess with all this mechanism stuff. And the fact that it has to be in the correct sides and you have to convert ethylene from gas to liquid and then, yeah, it's a big mess here, but it's nice and neat on the sides. I can facade these two cables and yeah, that's it'll look good from the front basically, which is fine. Um, yeah, so this is all working now. We're currently at 52,000 RF a tick. I said, I might have said 56 earlier, but yeah, 52,000. I'm going to bump this up to the full 80,000. Wait, our power. Uh, oh, it would help if I actually powered this. Um, wait, isn't this. Oh, I'm missing a conduit here. That's what it is. <clears throat> so yeah, this should now be... We should now be positive in ethylene, yeah. So we're back to the way we were back over there. So yeah, I'm going to make the rest of these turbines bump it up to 80,000. And then I'll go from there. Okay, so I have the last of the turbines here crafting. Um, that will mark us out at 50, the 50 cap. Um, so that'll take us up to, I believe, 80,000. Um, so yeah, that just involved me adding the, the last setup here with the melter for ender pearls. And then I have lead platinum alloy on on demand, basically. And then this feeds into here to make enderium. And that is the main component that's involved in these turbines here. Uh, so yeah, I think that's all I've got time for in this one. So I'm going to leave it here. I think this was, this is going to be a better place for it. Obviously this isn't going to be cobblestone, like all of this. I'll have to rework all this. It just was the initial idea when I was building all the walls here. But I don't know if it'll stay like this. Uh, yeah, so I think this spot is better. Although I said I was going to do magic here. Um... I think the vo Void Ore Miners sit, are going to sit well against this wall here. And yeah, they're just... We're just basically waiting on this Erodium to upgrade to the next tier. So this should be the last of the turbines here now. So I'll place... I don't really know if I want to go much higher here. Maybe I'll just stick them in here. And I think that's 49. Yeah, so one more. And by the way, the, the reason it's spiking like this is because it's the um, UU matter um, production. Basically, I have this set up so that once it's over 95% full, it sends a signal to the UU matter to turn on. And so that's why it's going down like this, because the UU matter will just eat as much power as you throw at it. So there's our last one there. So this should give us the 80,000 that we were looking for. Yeah, there we go. So that's our, that's our turbine maxed out here. So yeah, sorry this was a bit all over the place. Uh, although I did learn a lot from the first time I played this pack, it's, there's still, I'm doing things in a vastly different order this time. Uh, like I had all the magic done and I haven't even touched magic this time around. So that's something that we can't avoid much longer. So. <laughs> I'll have to do magic at some point, um, but once it gets started, it's it's really good. Um, yeah, I'll probably finish up some more building here, um, properly finish the walls on this area here, and then hopefully we'll have enough crystals to upgrade this to the next tier, or the next few tiers maybe, and I'll perhaps build a second one and then we'll go from there. And that should allow us to get the dimensional shards in order to get this set up finalized although there might be some other thing blocking us who knows but yeah i'll save that for next time again thanks for watching and see you next time